We're on the record in case D592622, um, Sternberg versus Warnick. Is this Judge Hayashi? Yes, this is Judge Hayashi of the Santa Clara County Superior Court. Hello, this is Judge Forsberg. Um, we are on the record in our court. I assume you are as well. We are. Um, would you like me to go ahead and have appearances stated here in our court? Sure, that would be fine. Very good. Thank you. Tristan Ashelman for the petitioner, Shelley Warnick, who is present. Okay. Uh, Michelle Bell appearing on behalf of Michael Sternberg, uh, especially appearing. Okay, and then in our courtroom I have counsel. Good morning, Chris Alderman, bar number 13061 on behalf of the plaintiff, Michael Sternberg. Counsel? Okay, right. I'm, I'm sorry, our, our court, uh, can you hold on just for a moment, Judge Forsberg? We just need to adjust the volume here, the court reporter here cannot hear what's being said that? in the ballot. Okay, can you hear me, though? You might need, you both um, need Can to we try and increase the volume in the courtroom? No, he did. Come up here, please. Be around here. This one. This one works better than us. We'll proceed, and I'll have him state it again, okay, Judge? Very good. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Chris Alderman, bar number 13061, on behalf of the plaintiff, Michael Sternberg. Okay. Meredith Weiner, bar number 12299, on behalf of Shelley Warnick. Your Honor, did you hear that, them now? Uh, uh, unfortunately, no. <laughs> okay. It is, I, I have both counsel here for both parties as well, um, um, so we'll move forward on it. And I, know, I don't know if it's yours or mine. We just had new phone systems input in our court, so you know how that works. Well, uh, Judge, I appreciate it because I can hear you just fine. It's just we can't. I, we could not hear the attorney. Okay, okay, Your Honor. So I believe most of this will be between you and I anyway. So if we could proceed, um, the reason I, I, I asked for the UCCJA is, as you know, you had a previous case in your courtroom, but um, when they appeared before me uh, at the previous hearing, um, we discussed on 731 um, that uh, Miss Warnick. The allegation is this, Your Honor, the children have lived here for a year. Um, and according to mom's statement, she rented an apartment and she admits she even registered to vote here for a year. And now she's saying running, the plaintiff's position is that now she's running back to California to get jurisdiction to remain back there when she's actually been here in Nevada for a year. That's the allegations that were before my court why we set this hearing. I understand, um, and I've been provided with a supplemental declaration uh, by a petitioner and her counsel, um, and it, it did appear to the court that um, throughout this time, at least based on her declaration, she's contending that she's maintained a home in California um, and um, maintained and um, filed. Uh, taxes in California, maintained employment in California, um, and um, maintained a vehicle and driver's license in California, that uh, she is employed out of Oakland Airport, and that her stay in Nevada was for less than a year, during which time she was routinely returning to her home in California. She also said that the boys came with her to California on several occasions, and that the boys maintained um, that their home uh, is in, in Southwest Tahoe. Um, so, Your Honor, my understanding is they attended school for the whole year here in, in Clark County. That was what both parties stated in my court at my last hearing on 731. I understand that. So my, my thought is, I don't know what your thought is, Your Honor, but I, my thought is, look, I don't know e either, look, she, by her own statement, she even registered to vote here. You have to swear that you're a resident of Clark County in order to do so. So she got an apartment, leased it for a year, is just given it up. Our understanding is it's to be given up either this month, it would have been a year this month, so she gave it up at the end of the lease at the end of her year, and the children have been here. So my thought is, even if even if the other part is true that she's flying back and forth, it would seem like Nevada, that California would be an inconvenient form when the children, now there's, it's all child issues, that the children have lived in, Cal, in Nevada for the school year. So I'm just not sure what your position is to that. Well, my tentative inc inclination had been to not see jurisdiction. 
Yes, Your Honor, if I may. Your, your, your request is what, Your Honor? Well, I was, I was not intending to seek jurisdiction. It did appear to me from what I've seen that, that um, the original, uh, the parties had been acting pursuant to the custody um, orders that had previously been made by their agreement. They had modified it for the, um, temporarily. I didn't, um, and I didn't, it didn't appear to me that Mother had given up residency in California. Mm -hmm. Um, I do understand the issue with regard, and I'd like to, uh, with regard to registering the vote, um, um, but, um, and I'm not sure why that was done, um, why she registered the vote in Clark County, if that was in fact her intent to change residency, um, for their neighbor to be able to avail herself of the ability to vote. Mm -hmm. um, but other than that, that fact, it appears that all facts um, seem consistent with her remaining a resident of California. Well, I, I'm, not, I'm not sure that I would agree only because she um, got an apartment here. She flies out of our airport here even though she um, keeps her base of her work in Oakland. I'm just a little uh, in, concerned about that. But when she came to my court, when she stated that she, she admitted that she registered to vote, she's, you know, rent, leased an apartment for a year. The children have been here for a year in school for the school year other than the summer and any you know off track times they've been here in Clark County attending school so I'm a little unclear of why you know how we will proceed your honor mm -hmm. well frankly I've never run into a situation where the two judges can't agree with regard to where jurisdiction is appropriate. Um, so, um, if, 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 And Your Honor, I would agree with you if she hadn't have come here and registered to vote and stated, you know, by her swearing that she is a resident of Clark County. That's where I, that's where the, the glitch is that, that mm -hmm. Ms. Warnick pursued that avenue. All right. May I, may I go ahead and hear from Ms. Warnick's counsel, please? You bet. If I may, Your Honor, um, with regard to the registration of those, that is... Uh, Mr. Ashman, you're going to have to talk into the microphone. Thank you. Is that better? Um, Judge Forsberg, can you hear Mr. Ashman? Yes, we can hear him, Your Honor. Thank you. So with respect to Ms. Warner's registering the vote in Nevada, um, that is accurate. And first, I reviewed the requirements for registering the vote, and it does ask the question, are you a resident of Nevada, or have you been a resident? days and not counting from two days. But the problem with that question is, is it presupposes that you can't have multiple residences under the UCCJEA. In, in very marriage and very, you are permitted to have two residences. The question is, is whether she was no longer a resident of California, and that was not the case. She maintained a home here. She continued to travel here when she wasn't visiting the children. She was employed here. She um, filed property tax or paid property taxes here. Um, so she remained a resident of California um, while well, she did run an apartment um, in, in the marriage of uh, Mary, the husband or the father lived in Pakistan predominantly for three years and of course still determined that he had not given up his residency in California and that California should maintain jurisdiction. Um, so the fact that she did register to vote um, in the data is really new. Um, and also, it's about where she presently resides. And I don't think it can be disputed that she presently resides in California, and present residence is based on at the time that the determination of UCCJEA is being made, which is right now. Your Honor, can we ask him a question, please? Did she um, get a driver's license in Clark County, Nevada? No, she did not. Okay, then ha that, so she went online and registered, so she had to take affirmative, see, my question was, did she inadvertently register to vote while she was getting a driver's license? But it sounded like she intentionally sought to declare Nevada as her residency by, by declaring herself a resident here to vote. Even if that were the case, she doesn't presently reside in Nevada, and what matters is that she presently resides in California right. while this determination is being made. 
Counsel, my, my question for the judge, look, Your Honor, this is the other thing. You can't, like, move out of there for a year and then, oh, run back there would be my question because now do we have a question of inconvenient form for the children because the children have been, were here for a year going to school. That's the other question, Your Honor. So I guess that's the other question you and I have to determine. Because I don't think that, that either court, either state would want people to move out and then the minute somebody's going to file an action, they run back to their old state, uh, even though they've been here for a year. That's my question. Oh, I agree with you 100%. It's just not a question. It's not a situation where I see that somebody ran back to Santa Clara County or, for that matter, to California because she's not in Santa Clara County. But it's not a situation where I see somebody running back uh, to California if they maintained a home here, continued to maintain employment here, continued to, uh, I mean, other than the fact that she registered to vote and kept the temporary home so that she could be closer to the children, um, which is entirely understandable while they were attending school, um, it's not unusual, frankly, that we have people that do maintain two homes. I understand, Your Honor. I understand, Your Honor. As you can see, my only concern was whether it was most importantly was her registering to vote. I mean, you're declaring where you're going usually, you know, where you're going. I, I understand, and I just don't, um, you know, this is, a, this is not a situation where I think that somebody departed the state of California um, and, and, um, severed, and severed the ties of residents employment, driver's registration. Uh, this did appear to be more akin to somebody uh, establishing a temporary second home. Okay, then I will, I will, I'm willing to succeed to you, um, Judge Hayashi. I was just wanting just to explore it because, look, that was when you're, when, um, Ms. Warnick states that she declared herself as a resident here by, by doing the voter registration. That's where we got, you know, a little sideways on it, as you can imagine. Absolutely, and I do understand that and, and uh, appreciate uh, that, that you set up this opportunity for us to hear from everybody um, at the same time. Thank you. So you're, but on that side, they're saying that she's still paying her, paying her taxes in California and still um, we don't have state income tax, so it wouldn't be an issue here. So. Correct, and we have a couple yes, of taxes. The representation has been made to me that she's been paying both um, state property tax and state income tax here in California. And given her employment, it would be in California, I would assume that as a California employer, she's um, being withheld income taxes here in California. Okay, then, then, I, then, I, then I believe under that basis, the only, only right I would have to um, establish jurisdiction in Nevada would be whether it was an inconvenient form because the children have attended school here. And if, if you're not willing to succeed to, to, to see the, the jurisdiction, then I will let it remain in California. Your Honor, can I address this? Um, I do have a um, plaintiff on my side would like to address it as well, like you had the Ms. Warnick, Mr. Sternberg, Absolutely. attorney would like to address it as well. Go ahead, but you have to talk really close to that. Thank you. Can you hear me, Your Honor? Yes, thank, thank you. you. Sorry, I'm trying to get as close as I can here. Uh, I, um, I, I think counsel, counsel, in Nevada, may I ask? that you restate your name, please? Yes, absolutely. My name is Chris Alderman. I'm the attorney for Michael Sternberg. Thank you. Thank you. So I think first and foremost, I think we're, we're forgetting a few key facts here. First of all, there was a temporary order issued in California. There was no final order. So to sit there and say that, that there was a, a final order that the party subsequently agreed to make a temporary change to is, is not accurate. They went to a mediation, entered a temporary order, which got filed. There's never been an evidentiary hearing or anything in that court. One, less than a year later, the parties through counsel stipulated to dismiss that case. The pleading was drafted. That was not filed through the fault of counsel, but the party's intent was to dismiss that California case over four years ago, okay? So then we fast forward to now. She, meaning the, Shelley, the, the party in your courtroom, the defendant here, she relinquished custody to my client after she had a DUI with the kids in the car. He didn't ask for custody of those kids. She voluntarily gave the kids up knowing that they would be in Nevada for one year. He's had primary physical custody of the children for one entire year where they've been in school. He's been open with communications, she's had visitations, and I think it is, I think we need to give more credence to the fact that she did have an apartment here, she did register to vote. Now I understand you can own property in California. Counsel, and pay counsel, I need to, this is Judge Hayashi. 
I need to point out that there was a judgment entered here in Santa Clara County on October 4th, 2012. The judgment was not only a judgment to parentage, but it also was a judgment with regard to custody and visitation. And custody under the party's judgment was joint legal custody as to both parents. That judgment has not ever been modified, counsel. I think, I think what he's saying, Your Honor, and this is Judge Forsberg, he's saying that the parties entered a stipulation to dismiss that entire action, but somebody's counsel did, I believe it was um, Ms. Warnick's counsel, is that correct? I don't, um, I don't think, excuse me. Did not file the dismissal. They, they signed it all. They, they, both stipu they both stated in my court that they did sign a dismissal request. Both parties, but, and I have both counselors say that's true. Ms. Warnick said they both signed a dismissal of that action. Somehow it did not get filed. That, that's what um, Mr. Sternberg's counsel is stating, Your Honor. I understand this, but it was my understanding, and perhaps I'm wrong, but it was my understanding that the request for dismissal um, was, was made after the judgment had been entered. So um, under our procedures, a request for dismissal that is made after a judgment is entered does not serve to set aside the judgment. The judgment has already been entered. Okay, and, and certainly that would be different in our court. So, and that, that, was, our, that was also our question because we did not know what, the, of course, not knowing the law in California, being in a Nevada judge, I don't follow all of that, but you clearly, uh, that's different in, in Nevada. If they'd stipulated it should be dismissed, it would have been dismissed here in Nevada. So I, you're saying, Judge, that that's different. It's still an order. Of, of your position is it's still an order because they, nobody dismissed it. Until the judge says it's not an order, it's still an order. Correct, Your Honor? It, until, unless the judge sets aside the judgment, and there would have been a procedure to set aside the judgment, okay. and then dismiss the action, but there was never a request to set aside the judgment or for the parties to be relieved of the effect of the judgment. So even if they had filed a request to dismiss the action, if the judgment is not set aside, the judgment still stands. Okay, Your Honor. Then, then um, it's clear that, that you're requesting that jurisdiction remain in California based on the facts, and I'll certainly agree with that. Your Honor, excuse me, I'm sorry. May I have a minute with my attorney, please? Cal uh, yeah, this is not the time, sir. Your time to talk to him was previously. Um, your counsel is well, here I, I to make the I would like to get some stuff on the, on the record, please, which I believe is my right. Um, your Honor, um, Mr. Sternberg would like a moment to just to add some things to his okay, client to then, make a record. Then, then excuse me, Judge Forsberg, because I have a nine o'clock call. I do too. Expected Your Honor. in another case, um, and so uh, if I can ask that we just either. Um, he he's going to state. Um, his counsel is going to state it right now, Your Honor, and then we'll resolve this call if that's okay. So thank you. Mr. Sternberg represented to me that all of the stuff regarding this California residency happened after the fact. So Evan was already born here. And we, th we also need to remember, too, that if, and we're conceding that she was here tempor maybe temporarily, maybe permanently with the apartment and the registration to vote. But at that point, California lost UCCJA jurisdiction because nobody was there anymore. Everybody was in Nevada. So that was rel California relinquishes jurisdiction at that time. One of the minor children was even born here. So, counsel, uh, counsel, you need to slow down. Okay. You can't. You cannot talk that fast. <laughs> okay, Your Honor. Thank you. Did you want me to back up a bit, or no? Okay. No. One more thing I would like to ask. I was served with the brief from uh, counsel in your in your court there. Yesterday at two o'clock, I got an email of a brief. My client's attorney in California hasn't had the opportunity to send any such brief to the court. I would ask that we defer that uh, determination for the UCCJEA until his counsel in California can submit uh, a brief as well. Counsel, this is an informal proceeding between courts. Correct. There are some jurisdictions in which there is not, there is no briefing, 
and there is no briefing schedule for these procedures. There's not in our court either, Your Honor. So this is Judge Forsberg, but you are, there's not a requirement in our court either. I understand um, counsel's position. He's making a record, but um, based upon the statement you've stated, Your Honor, and the fact how California lies, I'm going to succeed jurisdiction to California. That, that will be based upon the statements that, you, that you've made. We will go ahead now that we've placed all the facts on the record. Okay? Thank you very much. Your so will Honor. you do a, a minute order and let me know that, I mean, how do you want to proceed procedurally, Your Honor? We will uh, prepare a minute order here and send it to you, and then if you would also just prepare a minute order you for your court and send it to our court so that they can both be filed in the cases um, respect to, uh, uh, confirming that um, jurisdiction has been ceded to uh, the court in California. Thank you, Your Honor. We'll go ahead and do that. Your Honor, I'd like to get one more Thank thing. you. There's nothing else to be said. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. Thank you.